Hello again everyone and welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. I know I haven't recorded or posted anything in a very long time, but it's always better late than never. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this stylistic effect within After Effects. So as you can see, that effect is pretty freaking cool. and. I actually made this video about a year and a half ago, if not two years ago. Um, but at the time when I was looking up how to do it, I couldn't find a lot of really good information on it. I actually originally got the idea from a live performance by Odessa. And I can show you a clip of that on the screen. There was a little bit of a warping effect on these graphics that were shown in the background. And I thought it was really cool. And we just so happened to be shooting a video that was... Uh, very kind of Stranger Things like we wanted a little bit of an ambience to it um, and it was the bumper was entitled or the series that we were working through was entitled uh, Identity Crisis and we thought what better than to kind of warp somebody's face warp somebody's identity and kind of bring that effect into the foreground. So as you can see this effect is really freaking cool and it's really only one effect and I'll show you right now what kind of plugin we're working with. It's called AE pixel, oopsie, AE pixel sorter. Now, this effect costs forty dollars. It's a one-time buy, though, and it's really a awesome effect, especially if you're doing this for commercials or some kind of music video, and you're getting paid to make graphics, whatever it may be. This is a really cool effect to have on hand, so I wouldn't worry too much about the money. It's a quick buy. Um, use as many licenses as you want for as many different devices, um, and it works surprisingly really really well so we'll just go through the project really quickly uh, i'll just go through my footage layers uh basically we just me and my buddy trevor fadden we uh went ahead and just captured some of this footage of people or you know our actors just being a little bit distorted and uh kind of uh, disorganized um and then i think what we did initially for this too is we just turned our shutter speed down quite a bit and then so we get a little bit of this um duality you know, his glasses are doubling up. You see the, the warping around his hands. And it kind of just adds to the effect as a whole. Uh, we got a few other clips in here of just people looking distorted. I'm not going to use all of the clips that were shown in the original. Uh, just a few. Because this effect is actually fairly simple. It's just um, kind of the, the, the way you go about it that makes a difference. And I'll talk about that right now. And that is basically the whole point of using this uh, this green screen thing that I'm about to bring up. So... We had essentially, we, since we were using so many clips, like in the original, we had a ton of footage that we were working with. Um, so we, I think we, there was like a subscription thing online that we paid like $20 for. And basically it's just a render engine that uh, masks out your subjects for you. Uh, and it does it very, very quickly. And, you know, it's practical for some uh, projects like these if you need a fast turnaround time. Uh, you don't have to do this. Uh, I want to make that very clear. And I will show you a way to <clears throat> get around this if you don't want to spend any money. But it is very cheap. And uh, for all intents and purposes, on this tutorial, I will be using the green screen effect just because it's going to make it go a lot faster. But right now, I will show you exactly how to do it if you um, if you don't want the green screen effect. Um, and basically, the whole, only reason we're using this is uh, if you just take this basic clip right here and we throw the AE pixel sorter on top of it, and then we start playing with the values uh, here it will warp the entire image. And ultimately for, and some people might want this, but ultimately for the effect that we were looking for, um, if you take something like this image right here that's already masked out, uh, we go and apply a key light effect to this. Uh, turn the screen color into the green. Now we have a fully masked out version of our subject and we can scale him however we like. I even, I think I ended up just scaling him a little bit bigger than the previous, just so that we have no double ups at all. And you can see that looks pretty clear there. When you go ahead and add the AE pixel sorter to this, and you play with the values, you'll notice that uh, if we get it right, it'll just be on the subject. You don't see any warping in the background, and uh, that's ultimately what we're looking for. Uh, because it looks so much cooler when you're not just like warping the entire screen. Uh, and we'll still use it on the background, but yeah, let's let's dive in. We'll go ahead and, for all intents and purposes, if you'd like to skip past this part, you can. I'll put, you know, 
little markers in the so you can see if, if you don't want to see this part if you are going to follow along with the green screen but if you don't want to do that basically what you can do is just you can uh, take the clip that you're working with uh, click G on the uh, keyboard and basically just start clicking around your object and this is just basic masking I'm assuming if you're watching this tutorial um, that you're pretty far ahead in After Effects and kind of know how to do this already so you can skip through this if you'd like but essentially it's just I'm making a very basic basic mask uh, this is not, you know, very good at all. But and again, I will say for this effect, you don't really need to mask it very well because it's going to be distorting so much. Um, so there's my mask around the subject. Put up to 100%. That's him. And then as you go, basically you'll just go to the masking tool, hit mask path, and then go to your preview tab and then just go one frame forward and then you can kind of just move. Um, you can kind of just move your markers as you go. So you'll click here. You'll click on a marker, and then you can move it and adjust it. Now this is a bad example because he really doesn't move very much in this whole thing. Maybe right there, he. It's a little bit right here. And then you can see that you're adding keyframes down below that will move as you go. So. And, and, and if you're using really small clips like this, this is actually pretty practical. Um, yeah, just do as you will with that. You can, might even try just keeping one mask on there and not keyframing it at all. I'm sure with the amount of distortion that's coming through here that you wouldn't see much difference anyways. So I'll go ahead and delete that mask for now. And we'll go to our green screen effect. We'll go ahead and turn it on. And then we'll go over to the effects and presets tab, type in AE and you'll get the AE pixel sorter. You can drag it on to that green screen top layer. And ultimately, this effect is literally just a game of keyframes. Um, you want to get your look first down, and then you want to just play with the effects from there. So I'd like to start out with the process tab. Uh, you can close the input tab for now. You're not really going to need to use it. You can play around with it if you'd like to, uh, but it's it's kind of just a it's not really relevant. So. We'll go to the process tab. You're mainly going to be working in the triggers and the um, and sort by. And ultimately, what I've found to be more, most useful is if you want more of a distortion effect on certain colors, um, go ahead and go that route. So you can see we have red, a lot of red here coming on his face from the side here and then down below. So we'll turn this to the red channel, turn that to the red channel. You can keep this on luminosity before and you, you can play around with it as much as you'd like, but for this tutorial I'm going to keep it on the red channel and then I like to go ahead and play with the threshold just turn it down a little bit and you'll start to see a little bit of the distortion come in so there we go I have a little bit of distortion there <clears throat> and then we'll play with the angle because I like to make it so that wherever the light is coming from that's where the distortion effect is coming from as well so I'm going to turn this angle up a little bit because you can kind of see if you turn the effect off you can kind of see we have the, the, the light coming up in this uh, upward angle and I kind of just want to replicate that. So I'm going to turn this back on and kind of just get it to where I feel that's where it's originating from. So that looks pretty good. Threshold is one that you're going to play with a lot because ultimately that matter, that, that means the effect is on the screen or is it, if you turn this to zero or if you turn, excuse me, if you turn this up, you're not going to see anything. And then if you turn it down, the lower you go, the more of the effect you're going to see. So I'll keep that at one for right now. Uh, block size, I really only go between 1 and 6. If you go too large, like you start getting into the 12s and stuff like that, it can get a little bit too blocky, and then it just doesn't look very clean. So I usually try to stay between 1 or 6. There's 6 right there, even a little bit lower, honestly. It just depends on where you're at with the rest of the effects, but I think 3 is good for now. So we'll keep that at 3. The length is going to control how far it's animating. So if you turn this down, you're not going to see much. If you turn this all the way up to 100, you're going to see a lot. Uh, I'm going to keep that at 100 for now. And then offset and offset randomness, these are very important as well. This will ultimately just like get you to where it's super random, especially with the uh, offset randomness. If you turn this guy up, you'll see we get a lot of different variation within the effect versus if this were to be off, it's very just stagnant. So we'll go ahead and turn this up to... 84% looks okay. We're going to keyframe all these values later. Um, and then you can play with the cycle as well. The cycle really just uh, 
shows where it is on the plane. It kind of just moves it around a lot. So I'll keep that at minus 10. And then your random seed, this will actually randomize it quite a bit as well. And it will actually play really well into the block sizing. It'll. What I've noticed is it, the more you turn this up, the tinier the lines get. So if you want to turn your block size up and then... Oh, that's maybe too high. If you want to maybe turn your block size up and then play with the random seed, it'll kind of mess around and those two kind of go hand in hand. So we'll Command Z that. Um, and then maybe just turn this to kind of a lower value. 300 looks good. And then also you can see we're getting this little bit of a hard edge on this side. I like to go to the feather end and just turn this up a little bit. It'll make it so just so that this, side, this edge blends a little bit more, which is what we like. And then we'll go ahead and start making some keyframes. So I'll click on my layer. I'll keyframe the threshold, the block size, maybe the offset randomness, the cycle. And then we'll just start with that with those for now. So I'll click U on the keyboard, which are going to bring up all of my keyframes. You can see we have threshold, block size, offset, randomness, and cycle. And then we'll go to about halfway through the clip, if not a little bit lower or a little bit sooner. And then we'll just play with the threshold. We'll ultimately turn this down. And it's kind of a little bit of a fine-tuned one. So we'll go to about maybe right there. That looks really cool. I love that. At about 0.7. Turn up the block size to maybe five. And then we will increase our offset, maybe. Or maybe pull it down a little bit. Yeah, I like that. And then let's play with the offset randomness. I like the way that looks. Even at zero, that looks pretty cool. I'm going to turn it up just a titch. There we go. And then I'll play with my cycle just a little bit. Maybe turning it to the left so we get some... A little bit of distortion there on the on the far left side maybe a little bit up it's just a matter of finding where you like it all of these effects are just very fine-tuned and you just kind of have to find out where you like it the best and then I'll go a little bit further in the frame maybe turn this down just a little bit more to about 0.5 that looks cool Let's go 0 0.030, 0. see what that does. We'll turn our block sizing down to 1. Maybe decrease our length. Offset randomness, maybe turn that up. Offset, maybe right there. And then keyframe our cycle again. I don't know, it's just, it's kind of just a game of keyframes. Okay, so I've played with the keyframes a little bit more. I've kind of come to the conclusion that this is um, what I want for this particular clip. Looks kind of cool. Now, what you can see is this effect is really, other than this part right here where I just, I've, I've put it for basically a frame. I basically turned the threshold down to zero and it makes this really cool effect in the background. Um, I'm going to keep it like that for now, but... Also, what I want to do is I want to do a little bit of keyframes on the background now. So if you see, if we turn off this layer, this is just him. But if we go to the background and start playing with the threshold as well, and we can maybe even turn this green screen layer off so that you, just so we can see it a little bit more. Turn the threshold down just a little bit. You can see we get a little bit of distortion on the edges. Um, let's try to go over to the offset, maybe turn the offset up a little bit. I kind of like it all the way at zero. Maybe just the randomness. See, that's pretty dope. Let's do that. Maybe play with the cycle a little bit. That looks kind of cool. And then let's see what the block size looks like if we just animate that. That looks really cool. So let's keyframe the block size. Let's keyframe the threshold. And maybe just the cycle of the whole thing. And we'll click U. Then we'll Scroll down to the bottom. We'll go through it a little bit. And then maybe just turn this block size down to one. Maybe increase the threshold a little bit so it goes away. And then we'll go to the very end. Maybe turn this to zero. And then keep going a little bit further. Maybe turn the threshold back up to four. Or maybe even higher. Let's see what it looks like if it's even higher. Now I like four. 
and then let's turn down the let's turn the threshold up like crazy and then we'll go to the end and then turn the threshold off now you can see as we turn on this layer now we have a duality and this is where it starts to look really cool and you can start to get a lot of really cool effects because if you look if you turn this layer off you're getting a certain kind of effect already but it's on the entire background and it overlays on top of the subject whereas if you go in front you can kind of get a dual effect where you can see your subject better and you can also have a little bit on the background so guys that's pretty much it for the tutorial there is so much that this effect has to offer and I haven't even gone through everything I just went through threshold block size offset and the cycle uh, there's a ton of different things you can do sort of pixels you can do gradient uh, you can do a matte pixel which is you know you're really just getting into the weeds with this kind of stuff but there's a lot of really cool things you can do I encourage you guys to go out buy this effect install it mess around with it do whatever you can with it this is just what I did and I hope you guys have learned something from this. If you like this video, please subscribe and like this content because it will help me to create more tutorials like this in the future. I really appreciate your guys' support. Thank you for watching.